A very common question that we get asked is, if I could have one plane, what would it be? And also we get asked a very similar question is, I'm a beginner and I want one plane to get started. What should it be? Now, the answer to both, in my opinion, is definitely a jack plane. It's a, it's probably the generic option. It's the jack of all trades and it really is. This is a number five Stanley, just a Bailey's, um, spoke about it in the last video. And you'll also notice if you watch that video that I never did any work to the plane. Uh, this is pretty much out of the box how it is. I haven't flattened the sole, nothing. Now this is definitely the plane I would have. And still today I use this every day. It's a very commonly used plane in my workshop. And I would say that if a burglar turned up and robbed all my tools. But left me this jack. I wouldn't be too upset because I could still get on just fine with that plane. Just that one plane. Now the reason I choose the jack is it is, is length is very nice, particularly for a beginner and also just as a, a versatile all-round user. Something like this, which is a jointer plane or a triplane, it, it doesn't take a bloody brain surgeon to realise that it's quite clumbersome. You can sort of see the size of it on a small piece like that. It's a bit pointlessly clumbersome. Something like this, which is a smoother, is very very useful handy plane It's very fast and light so you know it scores a lot of points there now if I had a if I was planing by machine you know doing all my preparation by machine this would be a great first plane because just for light dressing it's all you'll ever need but I'm giving my recommendation on hand tool woodworking from start to finish so we've got a sawn material a sawn wood and we've got to prep all that. We've got to dress it all. This is, this plane can do it all. It can go right up to smoothing. Now, I would cheat a bit. I would want two irons if I could. I could set it up if I only had one iron for a nice medium cut. And that'll do a, a variety of things. But if I could, I would have a, an iron like this, which is a nice curve on it. Nice camber on that. That would be my uh, roughing plane uh, iron, should we say. I would do all my roughing work with that, any sort of edge work that I needed to do. And then I would have a second iron. Now this iron, I just nicked it out of my smoothing plane. So I've spent a lot more time on this iron than I did with this. This was the iron that I keep in this plane. And I'll tell you the truth, I haven't even flattened the back of it. I just rub it about a bit on the stone, never polish it and it works. This iron, like I say, it's out of the smoothing plane, it's out of a number four. I've given it a considerable amount more work. I have flattened the back, spent a bit of time with the cap iron, and I normally polish the uh, edge when I sharpen. I'll go into that later. But I wanted to really show you how a plane that truly has had nothing done to it can work with material as atrocious as this. Now, I'm building a bit of a chair slash commode at the minute in oak. I've built one in pine as a prototype, and I'm working on an oak version at the minute. And I've got a load of old gate posts that were kicking about the yard. And they must be over 100 year old. Great big thick things, about 10 by 10. So I've, I've ripped them down on the bandsaw. And just to get enough legs for one chair, it took me two bloody bandsaw blades. So it was a bit gutting. It's, it's like a stone, old oak. It goes like rock. So it's real hard and really gnarly. And I can show you. You might be able to see it. You can see how here. Oh yeah, it's just treating as lovely. And then here it does this U-E on us and comes right back at us. I mean, that's nearly vertical, that. It continues like that all the way back here. And then it comes back around again. It's doing all sorts around here. But a plane like this, you just, you'd just you think you'd have to have some sort of super spec plane. But, you know, once you sort of... For having that second iron that's been worked well, I can jump from this, which is, you know, it's a nice shaving. And you can hear there's absolutely no sound of tear out. Tear out, you can actually hear it. I always hear it before I see it. Just hear that tone change as it goes against that grain. But honestly, there's nothing there. That is That impresses me even now. It's, uh, you can see how the colour probably changes. It's very reflective here and here where we're going with the grain. But as we go against it, it does dull it. But no tear out. Oh, I could wax that. And I'll show you in comparison now. Let's whip this bugger out. 
we'll put this blade in. This is the one I normally run in. This is just general taking shavings off as quick as we can. It's not as cut. I could set this up a hell of a lot coarser if I wanted to as well. If I had these two irons going and only this plane, I'd make this, this iron a lot coarser. But uh, back it off. That one's worn a lot more, so I have to take it out. But I'm not changing anything on the mouth. I can't because I'd have to strip the plane down to do that. It'd be impractical. But it's just for having the different setups. See how that goes and wax it up. I like to use a little candle for wax um, over oil and things. The only thing is, I was putting them in my pocket. I'm like bloody Willy Wonka when I go to the shop. And I'm trying to get a bit of loose shrapnel out to buy whatever it is I'm buying. And I've got a candle in there and a few gold coins. So here we go. Look. Now this is a nice general purpose shaving. Oh, it's shagged already. Already it's knackered. Let me take a few more so we can try and get the camera to see it. Yes. That's it. So that would be fine. That would be absolutely fine if I'm trying to hug some material off. But look at that. Hope you can see that. Oh, I just wish I could get you here just to touch it because you can really see it. I mean, that is absolutely... It brings tears to your eyes if that was the surface you was leaving. But as I showed you, you know, by switching that, that iron over, I've got a super smoother. Now you imagine what this could do if I actually give the plane some work. It, you know, it'd be a phenomenal tool, it really would. So that's why that is my one and only plane. I want to go back to the smoothing plane because I think it's quite important this... Uh, the difference in how we're, 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 we're what we're calling these planes is, you know, we're saying this small planes for smoothing, this long plane is is for roughing work. Well, it's uh, I find it a little bit more than that. It, I don't judge a plane's use on its length as such. I judge it on how it's set up. And as we mentioned with the cambered irons, a jack plane you want nice cambered iron, you want to be ogging that material off. A smoothie you want something much straighter for final cuts, like we had in that plane earlier. So a smoother. There's no trouble with its size for its intended use. Light work, light shavings, effortless. If we put a cambered iron in this, technically, we can turn this into a roughing tool. So why aren't I picking it? Well, it comes down to this tiny little bit in front of the mouth, in front of the, the, the cutting edge. But it's barely two inch. Look at it on the length of this jack plate. It's huge, plenty of surface. So what, what's the importance? Well, it's reference surface, particularly for a beginner. Now that tiny surface is no problem if you're already taking light cuts. But if we're taking much heavier cuts like we was a minute ago, we're sort of pre-charged with a bit of a power burst to push it through. And look, it's very difficult to reference if we're gonna put power behind it. You could, you could end up going up into it. You could end up chattering the cut. These are things that you'd overcome with experience, but still, it's something you've got to think about. Also, you're kind of like niggling on the end there. Something like this, you know, it references itself. You just drop it on and it does it. So it's much easier to start. You can cl plunk it right down, good reference surface, and then power your blow through. And, and, and that really changes everything on a roughing tool. And something I'll point out, something on, a, on like a modern plane. So I'm not, this is not about comparing old to new. I don't want to go there on this video. I'm talking about jack plane. Whether it's new or old, that's the way I'd go. But... Here, they've clearly thought of beginners in mind. Look at the bloody length of that. You know, plenty of space. And there's so much mass in the front of that. Honestly, it just... I'd say the centre of gravity was about where the mouth was. You know, it's a lovely... It's a lovely sort of a positive feeling when you start your stroke. Something that a little smoother lacks. 